Now, coming to island biogeography theory, it's a theoretical concept where to understand when we talk about diversity, the diversity is distributed with respect to different mainland as well as island. So this theory was presented by Robert MacArthur and Edward Wilson. So they presented a book which was named as the theory of island biogeography in, in 1967, where they talked about different aspects of biogeography with respect to the island and mainland, where they talked about species richness and the diversity being a factor with respect to the size of the different islands, as well as the distance from the mainland or the source. So this theory was also applied to different systems like fragmented systems. Okay, like an urban system where a major chunk of let's say a particular national park is divided into single regions which encroached. Okay, now there are small small portions and fragments which consist of small small patches of animals. So this becomes a mainland island system. So another example could be when a sanctuary or a particular protected area which was near the city was divided and urbanized then that resulted in few different patches okay so this was the main sanctuary and the other regions which were encroached and divided by the urbanized city left out small small patches now these patches were home to multiple animals so the multiple animals will move forward and back and forth so that will also function as an island biogeography system or also called as insular biogeography systems it is also applied to metapopulation dynamics okay, it is this kind of same where they talk about the movement and species richness as well as diversity is consisting of the area as well as the distance from the mainland so this is the graph that was mentioned with respect to the island baggage of faith theory and it is important to understand that okay so the importance of island biogeography theory lies with respect to the rate of immigration and rate of extinction. You cannot just say how a species richness will affect it. So you cannot just say the species are moving. Okay. You cannot identify which species are moving, which species are not, how the diversity is changing until or unless we understand the rate of immigration and rate of extinction. So rate of immigration talks about rate of colonization, the organisms which move to this portion to this. So when they are moving from A to B, they are colonizing or immigrating to B okay and they are, when they are leaving it or when they are dying in this region so they are facing extinction right so when we see this graph we'll understand that the rate of immigration will be highest when the islands are closer okay let's say this is a mainland this is the mainland and these are five three islands these are A this is B this is C okay so these are few islands and this is island D and this is island E. Okay, so these are the few islands that are associated. You will see that the closest island will have higher rate of immigration. I mean the closest the island will receive more individuals. So the closest island will receive highest immigration. As the number of species increases in the island when there are lots of organisms in that island obviously the rate of immigration will decrease because this island is already filled with many organisms so the rate of immigration will slowly decrease okay so this is how it is represented when the number of species are many the rate of immigration decreases even if the island is close then farther the island lower the rate of rate of immigration okay similarly when the number increases the immigration will decrease Okay, so the, as we are seeing the rate of immigration decreasing when the species diversity is increasing or the species richness is increasing. Then comes smaller the island, higher the rate of extinction. Obviously, when the islands are smaller, there is larger rate of extinction, right? As because there are many species. So when there are many species, the highest extinction rate will be seen in small islands. When there are many species, lots of species, there will be a higher rate of extinction in smaller islands which will be obviously lower in larger islands when the islands are larger obviously even if there are many species the rate of extinction will be lower than that of the smaller islands okay and the rate of extinction will lower down when there is decrease in species when the when the species are either going out or dying then the rate of extinction will get lowered down as well okay so this is the idea, so this is the graph 
that shows about how different organisms with respect to the rate of immigration and extinction happens so the organisms will flow in there or come out there with respect to the available organisms in the mainland as well as in the island so in this graphs you can see the highest amount of species diversity and species richness so this is we are talking about number of species hence species richness so the species richness is you can see highest in the cross section of islands which are close to mainland and larger island the islands which are close to mainland and larger island have highest species diversity and species richness okay so again the islands which are close to mainland and are large in size they have higher species richness followed by the islands which are far from regions and larger the islands which are far from mainland and are large they have second highest species richness so eventually you can see the islands which are small and far from mainland has the lowest species richness so this is how the island biogeography theory came in so if you are saying that this is the mainland and there are few islands now this is island a this is island b this is island c this is island d this is island f okay so when we talk about this let's say this is a b c d and e okay so obviously the rate of immigration the rate of movement will be highest from mainland to a okay so here we are not just considering the species richness but also seeing how much of individuals are coming and going so the species richness will be highest in island b because it is closer to the mainland it is larger okay so the species richness will be highest in island b the species richness will be lowest at island d because it is smaller and far from the mainland so island e has larger distance but it is comparatively larger hence the species are seen to be colonizing later on as well okay depends on the which organism can travel farther but if the area is less they will not be traveling to that region hence the size as well as distance is an important factor so the influencing factor that decides island biogeographic theory as well as the movement as well as the rate of extinction and colonization are degree of isolation that is distance from the nearest neighbor or mainland okay so considering this it is also important to understand that they will not just travel from mainland to the island but they'll also travel from here to here so the distance to nearest neighbor and mainland are also influencing factor then the length of isolation how much of time has it been passed to reach that or how much older is the island more the older island more the species diversity you can see right then comes the size of the island the larger the area larger facility of diversity and richness then there is habitat suitability even if the area is large and it is nearby if the habitat is not suitable then it will not face any sort of colonization okay then location relative to ocean current and oceanic movements if it is talking about oceanic divisions and flow of nutrients as well as flow of individuals from island to mainland we are also taking into account the oceanic currents the sea flow patterns the dispersal patterns and nutrient cycles apart from that it is also mentioning about the serendipity that is the impact of chance of arrivals which species will come first and which species will come later on that will also decide what will the rate of colonization and then there is human activity okay so these are influencing factors which decide which organism will travel from one particular mainland to one particular island remember that this can be also utilized to meta population dynamics as well as insular biogeography theory where they talk about you know island biogeography theory fragmented regions as well as meta populations so this is the entire end of ecological aspects of multiple regions where we talked about populations and ending up to biomes and biospheres of the entire world as well as india so this is it thank you